Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. And for all of you that may not have had kids, and you've stepped into the role of being a mom, that includes you too. That's right. So I got the opportunity, Mary and I got the opportunity with Amy to take our moms out uh, Friday night for Greek food, and we stuffed our faces. That's all I can tell you. We ate lots of good food, had a great time, and from what I understand from Amy, she laughed all the way home at these two that her face hurt so bad. So, i got to get all my papers in order here in just a minute. This is what happens when you come to church and you're not prepared. You come up here and your wife's already put everything up here like she's supposed to and leaves you, and you're like, uh-oh, I forgot to go up there and straighten everything out. Um, Pastor Terry and Sherry Kinnett are here. Where are they? Where are they? Oh, there they are. They came to check to make sure that I'm doing a good job keeping you guys in the right place. So I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm glad we got to finally get a chance to meet. Heard so many wonderful things about you. I felt like maybe they were some pretty big shoes to fill uh, behind you, but um, hopefully we're doing okay. So we're thankful that you're here with us today. I'd like to welcome all of those that are on the line watching. Uh, we're glad that you're here. Happy Mother's Day to all of you too. And um, we just are, are glad that you are welcoming us in to listen and watch. And uh, we hope maybe someday you'll come in and sit down with us and, and have service with us here. I want to let you guys know that we were tracking over the last month. We tracked how many views there were on our Facebook of our services. You guys would be amazed how many there were. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was in the 300s range. We had 300s range of views on Facebook, uh, watching our service. And so we're reaching people. Um, and hopefully, hopefully through that, uh, somebody that may not know the Lord will uh, come to know Him. Let's go ahead and then let's just bow our heads a moment before I begin. And let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for this day that we honor our mothers and thank you, Lord, for the mothers that are here in this room. And, and Father, we just ask you, Lord, to be with us. And um, Lord, this, this message is, is dedicated to our, our mothers. Um, we all have one. If anything else, we all have a mother. And Father, we thank you for them and the service they did and, and, and raising us and, and bringing us to a point where we are sitting in this room today and we're worshiping you. So, Father, we want to give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, as I said, we're here today to, to worship the Lord, but we're also here to honor our mothers. You see, not only are we commanded to honor our mothers, but it's just the right thing for us to do. And there's so many of them here today that we just need to love on and make sure. And by the way, if you didn't get a rose, ladies, when you came in, We'll make sure and get you one before you leave. I know how lucky I am to have such a wonderful mother, and, a, and in my mind, she was a heroine in my life. Also, I do recognize that not everyone has this blessing as I did. This is why Mother's Day can sometimes be uh, bring out many different emotions in people, uh, in, in because of the way they were raised or because of different reasons. Some women have lost their mothers. Women who have absent mothers, those who had mothers who were mean and possibly hurtful, women who are desperately trying or have tried to have a baby and maybe have become a mother themselves, those that never had children, and those that don't want children but feel that society expects them to, and women who are single mothers having to be a mother and a father to their children. And we could go on and on in the list of mothers there are, and we are just so grateful for them. There was a six-year-old boy separated from his mother in a supermarket one day. He began to frantically call for Martha, Martha, Martha. The, that was his mother's name, and, and she came running to him quickly. <clears throat> but honey, she admonished, why shouldn't why do you call me Martha? I'm mother to you. Yes, I know, he answered, but this store is full of mothers. <laughs> Our world is full of mothers, but we have only one mother who is special to each and every one of us. 
There is no one like our mothers, and no one can take the place of our mothers. Amen. Someone wrote, you've turned into a mom when you automatically double knot everything you tie. <laughs> you find yourself humming those children's songs as you're doing dishes. You actually start to like the smell of strained carrots mixed with applesauce. <laughs> You spend half an hour searching for sunglasses only to have your teenager come up and say, Mom, why don't you wear the ones that are pushed up on your forehead? <laughs> you, are out, you are out for a nice romantic meal with your husband, enjoying some of that real adult talk when you suddenly realize that you've reached across the table and you're cutting up his steak. <laughs> but see, there's a lot of things that our mothers taught us. My mom taught me to appreciate a job well done. She says, if you're going to kill each other, do it outside. I've just finished cleaning. <laughs> My mom taught me to pray by hearing this. You better pray that stain comes out of the carpet. <laughs> My mother taught me about time travel. She said, if you don't straighten up, I'm going to knock you in the next week. <laughs> My mom taught me about logic. She said, because I said so, that's why. <laughs> yeah. My mom taught me about foresight. She said, make sure you wear clean underwear in case you get in an accident. And I can't tell you how true that really is. Because I laid in the, ramp in the middle of Highway 40 in my underwear. Were they clean? When they cut his pants They cut my pants off. And then the guy asked me if I could feel anything down in my feet, and I said I did before I got cold. <laughs> my mom taught me irony. She says, keep crying, and I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> she taught me about stamina. You'll sit there until that spinach has gone off your plate. <laughs> my mother taught me about the weather and disaster recovery. This room of yours looks like a tornado went through it, and it better be clean when I get back. My mom taught me the circle of life. She says, I brought you into this world. I sure can't take you out. <laughs> My mom taught me about envy. She said, there are millions of unfortunate children in, in the world and that don't have wonderful parents like you do. My mom taught me about anticipation. Just wait till your father gets home. <laughs> I knew I was in trouble when that was coming. My mother taught me about receiving. She said, boy, I'm going to give it to you when we get home. <laughs> My mother taught me about medical science. She says, if you don't stop crossing your eyes, you're going to get stuck that way for the rest of your life. <laughs> she taught me how to become an adult. She said, if you don't eat your vegetables, you're not going to grow up. My mother taught me about roots. She said, my, excuse me, about my roots. And she said, shut the door behind you. What do you think, live in a barn? <laughs> How many of you guys have heard some of these? Before? <laughs> it doesn't matter what generation you are, everybody's heard them. <laughs> uh, my mother taught me wisdom. She says, when you get to be my age, you'll understand. It's funny, I just told my daughter that last night. <laughs> my mother taught me about justice. She said, one day you'll have kids and they'll turn out just like you. <laughs> I told that to my daughter, too. <laughs> On Mother's Day, we can't say enough good things about our mothers, but we're sure going to try. And God, God help us if we don't say the right things about them. <laughs> I want to share briefly these thoughts about our moms. I want to talk about her hands that worked hard, her, her mouth that spoke wisdom in her heart that loved us beyond all means. And her hands that worked. You know mom works so much. And she works from before we even get up to the time after we go to bed. And I'm going to give you a little example of that. The boy got his first job and as he was boasting about the amount of work he did, he said, I get up at 5 a.m. and I have my breakfast. He says, he had, someone asked him, he said, does anyone else get up too? He goes, replied, yes. My mom, she gets up, fixes my breakfast, and fixes my dad's breakfast. Somebody asked him, well, what about your dinner? The boy said, oh, mother fixes that too. 
Does your mother have the afternoon to herself? The boy replied, no, Mama cleans the house all day. She looks after the other children and when, uh, then has supper ready when we get home. Then we watch TV and we, before we go to bed. What about your mother? What, what does she do? He replied, Mama washes some clothes and irons for the rest of the evening. Someone asked him, do you get paid? He said, of course, Dad and I get paid. He said, what about your mother? Does she get paid? The boy replied, mother get paid? Mothers don't get paid. She don't do no work around here. <laughs> if anyone here today believes that, I would suggest you just keep your mouth shut. Because <laughs> I know that moms work a lot more. We're going to be looking into Proverbs 31 today. It's kind of the Proverbs 31 mom, women, actually, it's women. Um, I'm not going to be reading the whole uh, chapter to you, but we're going to look at a few verses that just kind of cover the different things about our mothers. It talks about how she sews and works with eager hands. She finds wool and flax and busily, 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 yes. forget it, spin it. And that's verse 13. Verse 19 says, her hands are busy spinning thread, her fingers twisting fiber. In verse 22, she makes her own bedspreads. She dresses in fine linen and purple gowns. Those are things that our mothers do. And to bring it to modern day, <coughs> modern day senses, she sews on the sewing machine to fix our clothes. She irons it and maybe puts the patch on a knee. I know my sister, she does quilts for people. She shops. You know that our mother shops. In verse 14 it says, She is like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar. Or bringing the food from Walmart or Publix or wherever you shop. It says she cooks. Verse 15. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household. Let me tell you something. There's some good cooking moms in this church right here. Amen. Because I've had some of that food. And you can tell. Because it's all because of y'all that this is happening. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. Not complaining, though. No, I'm not. <laughs> the devil's going to I mean, God's going to strike me down for, for entertaining the devil like that. Actually. She gardens. Verse 16. She goes to inspect a field fields and buy it with her earnings and she plants a vineyard. Her text also says that mothers in verse 18 for her lamp burns late into the night. Mm -hmm. So what's that old saying? Man works from sun up to sundown but woman's work is never done. Mm -hmm. Verse 27 she carefully watches over everything excuse me, watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. You know, my mom used, my dad used to say, I wear the belt in the family. Or excuse me, I wear the pants in the family. And my mom, but your mom, she's the belt that holds them up. I want to share with you a little bit about my mom and who is, in my opinion, my, the best mom ever. Hopefully, like you, though, your mom was the best mom ever for you also. There you go. She's sitting right there. She's right. a good lady. Yeah. Amen. She was the oldest of six children, and she had to drop out of school for a few years when she was young to help her mom take care of the rest of the siblings after their father passed away. But you know, she still graduated high school with her class. As a new bride, she waited and prayed for my dad during World War II while he was overseas for three and a half years fighting in a war. She supported my dad while he was a vet at veterinary school and was a new young mom to my brother. And during that time, she also served as student union president at the University of Georgia. She worked side by side with my dad when they opened the new veterinary practice. She took on a new, whole new experience when they adopted me. That was a whole new experience. <laughs> they had never experienced anything like that. She became a mother to my two cousins unexpectedly shortly after they adopted me and her and my dad became their legal guardians because they had lost their parents. She prayed and cared for a son who was in Vietnam and who was wounded. 
She provided meals for those in need with her cooking. She took in a foreign exchange student for a year and raised him as her own. She helped care for both my grandmothers at the end of their lives. She helped care for a sister and a sister-in-law and a niece all at the same time at the end of their lives. She ran the nursery at our church in Crystal River, Florida for over 20 years until she was in her mid-80s. She started riding motorcycles when she was 82 and rode till she was 94 and traveled all over the country. She prayed for me for years when I was lost. So much so, not only did I come back to the Lord, but I'm standing before you as a pastor. Amen. I love that I miss my mom, but I know where she is. We're going to talk about moms and the wisdom and that they, they speak that they speak to us in Proverbs thirty one twenty six it says when she speaks her words are wise and she gives instruction with kindness. When John Wesley was a student at Oxford, he was shocked by the amount of drinking that was done by the students there. Wonder what wonder what he would think about the students today and how much drinking goes on now. After writing to his mother, Susanna Wesley, for her counsel, he received the following words back from her. She said, My dear son, remember that anything which increases the authority of the body over the mind is an evil thing. Great instructions. And I'm sure that she, she expressed or gave many more instructions to her sons as they grew up. A London editor submitted to Winston Churchill for his approval a list of all those who had been his teachers. Churchill returned the list with this comment. You have admitted to mention the greatest teacher in my life, my mother. Reverend Dr. George Campbell Morgan, who was a British evangelist, had four sons, and they all became ministers of the gospel. At a friend family reunion, a friend asked one of the sons, which Morgan is the greatest preacher? While the sons looked at his father, he replied, Mother was the greatest preacher. Many mothers have done a lot of preaching to their children over the years, whether they consider it preaching or not. I remember my mom said a lot to me when I was a kid because I, I remember that she had washed my mouth out with soap a couple of times, which meant I said something wrong. Then there were many learning experiences I got myself into, and she had plenty of opportunity to learn me. <laughs> I've told you before that I used to tease her in, in front of other people, and I'd say, come on, Mom, you know that I'm the best kid ever. She's, oh no, you're not. You're wrong. <clears throat> I'm just thankful that she was there to teach me, for caring enough to tell me what was what and to set me straight. A mom's love in her heart. Proverbs 31, 11, and 12. Her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of, his life, of her life. If a husband has full and complete confidence in his wife, then he knows he's got a good woman. Proverbs 17.22 says, A cheerful heart is good medicine. You see, when there's a lot of laughter in a home, someone, someone is putting out some good medicine. If you walk into a house and you hear everybody laughing and, and that's just the norm in the way the family carries himself, it's a good household. But it also shows a lots and lots of love. I don't know about y'all, but I'm an Andy Griffith fan. I mean, I've got all the DVDs of all the seasons. And Mary and I, when we go to sleep at night, I, I've got ringing in my ears, so I have to have some noise on it, so we always watch Andy Griffith. It was really cool because there was one episode where, where Aunt B got called by a relative and she had to leave town for a little while because her relative was 
uh, recovering or whatever the case may be, and she had to go take care of him. Well, at the time, Andy was dating a woman by the name of Peggy. Well, he kept, you know, trying to do everything, and he burned the food, and the house became a mess, and it, it just was crazy. And then one evening, they were, they were, it was bad. You should have seen the beanie weenies they were in. It was bad. <laughs> And they didn't feel like doing anything. And, and even Opie asked his dad to sing, and his dad didn't want to sing or anything. About that time, here comes Peggy. She comes over. And all of a sudden, they're both chatting away, and, and Andy's grabbing his guitar and wants to play. And Opie says, Dad, what, what's the difference? What changed? Why are we this way now that we weren't? He says, because there's a woman in the house. A woman in the house. I think that says a lot about our ladies. A teacher at school put this question out to little Jimmy. He said, Jimmy, suppose your mom made a cherry pie and there were ten of you at the table. You, your mother, your father, and eight children. How much of pie would you get? He said a ninth was his answer. And she says, no, 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 Jimmy, not, no, pay attention. There were ten of you at the table. Don't you know your fractions? He said, yes, ma'am. He replied, I know my fractions, but I know my mom even better, and she'd say that she didn't want a piece of pie to give it to somebody else. See, the unselfishness of moms shows a heart of love for her family. And all of us can remember many unselfish acts of devotion our mothers made for us in our homes. I remember my mom fretted over my dad and put put her life on hold those last seven years after his heart attack and stroke before my dad passed away. She made sure that he took her, his medicine and he was well taken care of. And my dad would have probably said she took better care of me than she took care of herself. See, that's the way she was for all of us. Mom was always more concerned about her family and friends than she ever was for herself. She was always concerned about my brother and I and always wanted to know how we were doing. I remember mom, when I was walking in darkness for so many years, my mom, would, every time she'd call up, she'd always put it into conversation somehow or another. Are you going to church yet? Have you thought about going back to church? She wouldn't push it, but she would ask it. Thank you, mom, for, for loving Thank you, moms, for loving your family. Thank you. Thank you, my mom, for loving me much more than I showed her on some occasions. Proverbs 31, 28 says, Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. To those of you who are moms, thank you for all the love you have given all the time and what you've done. And for those that have stepped into the void in our hearts and became like moms, thank you for your love, care, and unselfishness. And if you're grieving the loss of your mom, that means she left a beautiful legacy and was a mom who filled all the blanks that we see above. Thomas Edison once said, I did not have my mother long, but she cast over me an influence which was last for my lifetime. The good effects of her early training I could never lose. If it had not been for her appreciation and her faith in me at a critical time in my experience, I should never likely have become an inventor. I was always a careless boy, and with a mother I... Different, excuse me, and with a mother of a different caliber. I should have turned out badly, but her firmness and her sweetness, her goodness, her potent powers to keep me in the right. My mother was the making of me. The memory of her will always be a blessing to me. What a lovely tribute to a blessed mother. Ladies, happy Mother's Day.